A clear message from striking nurses, yet still no negotiations with the government and talk of one-off payments or backdated offers appears to have fallen away. I can't believe that we've actually had to strike. Many of us, when we voted to strike, thought that the government would actually talk to the RCM, would chat to Pat Cullen before the day actually came. And this afternoon, the GMB union announced its ambulance staff would be taking industrial action alongside the Royal College of Nursing on February the 6th, possibly leading to the biggest strike in the history of the NHS. In Parliament today, the Labour leader focused on waiting times. Mr Speaker, it's three minutes past 12. If somebody phones, if somebody phones 999 now because they have chest pains and fear it might be a heart attack, when would the Prime Minister expect an ambulance to arrive? Mr Speaker, it's absolutely right that people can rely on the emergency services when they need them. And that's why we are rapidly implementing measures to improve the delivery of ambulance times and indeed urgent and emergency care. It's not just ambulance waiting times, though. Every corner of the health service in all four nations is stretched. And all parts of the health and care system are struggling. Inevitably, the strikes will have a knock-on effect. And of course, there's COVID and flu and the other respiratory viruses around this winter. But there is something different, something we haven't heard before, both in GP practices like this one or in hospital emergency departments. And it's the staff. We've seen many near tears because they are absolutely exhausted. And what they're saying is that they can't see an end in sight. That was fine. Come on, reception, how can I help? Never seen it so bad. You know, we've, we've gone with the highs and the lows, um, but never to be this low. Airborough is a small practice on the outskirts of Leeds with 4,700 patients on their list, which makes the next set of numbers even more shocking. They receive 250 to 600 calls a day. One day in December, they had 1,000 calls. It's the pressure, um, the relentless telephone calls, having to deal with the public that don't understand that are uh, not as um, sympathetic with waiting times as they used to be. So, um, yeah, it's, it's very, very challenging at the moment. How are you feeling? Uh, very tired, um, very, uh, very low, I'll be honest. GPs have been criticised for not enough face-to-face -face appointments and Labour has suggested patients could bypass the system if they wanted to, say, have a physio appointment. For one, that's very rude, you know, to think that, you know, why am I in this job? I'm here, I'm highly skilled, I've trained this for years. And, you know, we are here to try and protect the hospital. It is a finite resource. Dr Helen Lawton has been a GP for 17 years and she told us this is the worst she has known it. It's just, it's, it's just not the job that we're used to doing. You know, we haven't got the resources. As GPs, um, we know that hospitals are absolutely full to capacity. We're, we're being told to avoid referring, to avoid sending people to A&E. But, you know, we, get, we, we manage things as best as we can with the time that we have. But they, they we are getting to a point where, you know, you need to refer, we need a specialist opinion. And yet we know that, it, you know, their waiting time is going to be 40 weeks or longer. And analysis from the Channel 4 News fact-check team shows just how stark the problem is in England's NHS. Waiting lists 18 weeks after a GP referral were 10 times higher last year than in 2011. Over the same period, cancer care has seen a 14-fold rise in the number of people waiting more than two weeks to see a specialist. Those waiting more than four hours to be seen in A&E is ten times worse, and trolley waits of more than four hours once a decision has been made to admit is 16 times higher. None of which will surprise staff at the Royal Berkshire. This was Tuesday morning in A&E. It's filling up, so our department has at the moment, I think, 16 patients waiting for a bed. Um, we have now no more further physical bed space in the department so ambulances arriving at this trust have to queue. When that happens, how does that make you feel? It's kind of a bit of a um, very frustrating feeling to be honest with you, it's frustrating. And while we were there, one patient had been on the trolley for almost 24 hours. I'd say it's about consistency. Consistency of funding to invest in our workforce so we can train, recruit and train more staff and keep them here consistency of funding for social care for local authorities, 
so that they can really invest in care and placements uh, so that we can discharge more effectively. We need something that's medium and long term, not just short term and reactive. And the Department of Health said it is investing, describing it as the highest spend on health and care in any government's history. But on the picket line in GP surgeries and hospital a &Es, it doesn't feel like that. And Victoria joins me again with more from our poll. Victoria. Yes, well, some more polling. The public were asked if they supported the strike by nurses, and 63% said they did, and 30% said no, which might suggest why the unions are prepared to continue striking, why they're indeed prepared to ramp it up, as we heard on February the 6th. And also, it would suggest that the government was wrong in thinking that at some point the public would turn against the nurses for striking. Then they were asked, do you support the strikes by ambulance drivers and paramedics? And 61% said yes and 30% said no. So again, not much different from the nurses uh, and again, possibly a boost to the unions. Any good news for the government? <laughs> well, now this was interesting. The government is introducing legislation for a minimal, minimum level of service during strikes 54 percent supported it and 31 percent opposed it now the government had said for instance that the uh, and during the ambulance strike no national agreement had been met for a safe levels of staffing the union said that absolutely wasn't true they'd done it at local level uh, but nevertheless it would seem that the government is slightly ahead on that one victoria thank you very much